games that sell really well often become franchises. But sometimes, games that are launched with the best intentions fall short commercially. It doesn't even have to mean that these are bad games, they just didn't sell enough to invest millions into a sequel, even though there were plans for a second game. Let's take a look at 10 games that were not popular enough to make the sequel that was originally promised. In 2005, game publisher Majesco released Advent Rising. This third-person action-adventure shooter was supposed to be the first in a trilogy. When the game released on Xbox and PC, the game was troubled with frame rate and clipping issues. There was disappearing terrain and spawn points that would throw the player beneath the level. So, what do you have? I need something fresh. Something with flavor. A good flavor? Or just a strong flavor? Good and strong. Advent Rising failed miserably, and a second and third game in the Promise Trilogy were quickly cancelled. Advent Shadow, a prequel for the PSP handheld system, was also cancelled. Alright, I'll give it to you if you beat my friend in a little game. He kicks you in the nuts, then you kick him in the nuts until one of you gives up. Rockstar Games is always known for bringing quality to the table. The PS2, Wii, and Xbox 360 game Bully, or Canis Canem Edit as they called it in Europe, was praised by critics. However, it never sold an amount that could compete with GTA and Red Dead. In 2013, company president Dan Hauser mentioned he would like to make a sequel, but we didn't get more than a few concept art leaks in early 2017. I'm so angry. Your clothing? Social suicide. Considering Rockstar is now finishing up Red Dead Redemption 2, one can only hope for Bully 2. But GTA 6 seems to be a much more likely bet. The Wii U wasn't the commercial success Nintendo was hoping for, even though the system did have some cool games. Zombie U was certainly one of them, converting the Wii U tablet into a tool for inventory management, scanning the environment, sniping, and picking locks. You had to survive a zombie-infested London, and if you died, you respawned as a new survivor and needed to kill the zombified U to get your gear back. <laughs> Cool concept, but Zombie U didn't even come close to making a profit. Ubisoft decided to cancel all plans for a sequel and will likely never see this series again. With Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, and Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes on their resume, Silicon Knights made a big impact on the industry. Their next big thing would be Too Human, the first game in a trilogy developed for the Xbox 360. This Norse-inspired futuristic action RPG got terrible reviews and very poor sales. If that wasn't enough to cancel development of the trilogy, legal issues surrounding the Unreal Engine caused the studio to go bankrupt a few years later. Therefore, Too Human never became the trilogy it was intended to be. It's a good day to die. You always say that. It always is. How do you expect this to end? He fell right into my hands. <laughs> Don't be naive, Roddick. I know this man. Strictly Taken, Sin Episodes was a sequel to Sin, but let's look past that detail. Ritual Entertainment wanted to make the shooter into an episodic series. Sin Episodes Emergence was the first chapter, but the game studio underestimated the costs involved in creating the game. When Emergence only sold 150,000 copies worldwide, Ritual Entertainment didn't have the money to work on a second chapter. Screw you, cowboy, we're on assignment. Destination. I don't think that's any of your business. 
Eventually, the company was bought by casual game publisher Mumbo Jumbo, and the idea of episodic first-person shooters was abandoned altogether. <laughs> Save me a seat in the sequel, Blade. Here we go. We all know Bethesda as the publisher of games like Fallout, The Elder Scrolls, Wolfenstein, and Doom. But a couple of years ago, the company decided to publish games developed by external studios. Wet was one of their earliest deals. It's an action game with a female lead, which had a strong Kill Bill vibe. Reception was quite poor, as critics and gamers complained about the subpar graphics, short length, and clunky controls. A sequel was announced, but poor sales made Bethesda decide to move away from the franchise. Now, what is all dried up? Yes, we had to make that pun. If Skyrim and Fable had a baby, the result could very well be a game like Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. This action RPG looked amazing and was fun to play, but it had to sell over 3 million copies to break even. The game never sold those numbers, and the result was a disastrous legal battle which resulted in the cancellation of a sequel and an unrelated MMO. Kingdoms of Amalur is nowadays owned by the state of Rhode Island, and you can still buy the game for 20 bucks on Steam. Which makes us wonder whether taxpayers of Rhode Island can deduct the games from their taxes. But with the government in charge, we don't expect to see a sequel anytime soon. If this is true, and I'm not saying I believe it, then your path is yours to determine. <laughs> You would expect Conker's Bad Fur Day to be one of the best and most played games of all time, but reality is something completely different. This mature themed platformer for the Nintendo 64 was released by the end of the console cycle. And because of its mature themes, Nintendo refused to promote it and it didn't sell at all. <laughs> When Microsoft acquired Game Studio Rare, they canceled the sequel Conker's Other Bad Day. All we got was a remake of the original on the first Xbox, and plans for a true sequel have been abandoned forever. Oh, just great. I thought the designer said this was just a straight port. What a hack. Now, which one was it? Stephen King once wrote that nightmares exist outside of logic, and there's little fun to be had in explanations. They're antithetical to the poetry of fear. When it comes to quality games, Alan Wake was right up there. The development cost Remedy Entertainment millions of dollars, and even though the game sold decent and got good reviews, it didn't sell well enough to develop a sequel. Instead, Microsoft chose a cheaper option, a downloadable prequel. Plans for Alan Wake 2 were iced, and since Remedy worked on Quantum Break after that, it's not likely they will ever return to Alan Wake and his dark stories. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. The franchise was meant as a story told through multiple games, and it ended with a huge cliffhanger. But Alan Wake 2 will probably never come out, which makes us very sad indeed. Yeah? Hey, bestseller! How's my favorite writer? Are you there yet? Barry. Yeah. Yes. SXM2 Falchion. Good. The Falchion secondary ordinance should help. A couple of years ago, Sony Computer Entertainment and Ready at Dawn worked together on the third person action adventure game, The Order 1886. The game was never meant as a one off story, but in the end, it turned out to be just that one game. Even though this PS4 exclusive looked beautiful, it turned out to be a 6 hour long generic cover shooter. This was not enough reason for gamers to buy the PS4 exclusive.
With just over 1.5 million copies sold, it didn't bomb, but it wasn't quite enough to continue the franchise. Sony never approved the sequel that Ready at Dawn was already working on. I remind the knights here assembled that the threat to this order comes not only from without, but within. Those were the 10 games that were not popular enough to make a sequel. If you had to say, which series would you like to revive? Let us know in the comments, follow us on social media, and be sure to check out ZoomingGames.com.